What up, peoples of the internet? <laughs> What's up, anglers? It is uh, Monday today? Monday? And it's got to be Monday because it's been super busy, so I'm sure it's a Monday. How my setup all moved around. I'm looking for my phone. I don't know where I left my... Oh, there it is. Back here. Ow! I just hit my funny bone. That sucked. I'm going to do some shout-outs real quick while I get these lights up. everybody Let's see we have letter to the house eric nightbot already 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 mighty two hooks what's up dude it's been a while we have let's see muto alex norton what up alex welcome back ryan you in the house bit i see muto i see captain adobo i see tb mel art in the house tb mel art dot com look at that th- look at that stuff awesome uh what else what else we have captain dan what up captain dan Maddie, I haven't forgotten about getting you some dive gear. Had to see you. Good. Had to see you back here. Huh? Nice, nice, nice job. Okay, good, glad to see you back here. That's what he meant to say. Uh, let's see. MMFC, what up, everybody? Says Leonard. I see. Oh, Loop. I see Cal in the house. What up, Brian? What up, Jesse? Welcome back to Geeks. Real Dreamer. Worf TV in the house. Coach Worf. What up, Coach? Um, Coach, are you available today? Let me know. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I see. Izzy, what up, Izzy? I see Luke Gallagher. What up, Luke? Welcome back. I think I've seen you in here before. If not, welcome to the show. I appreciate you being being here. If you have any questions, please throw them in the chat. Any fishing questions, YouTubing questions, all that kind of all that kind of jazz. Uh, <laughs> Brian says, "Do we live in Minnesota?" Yeah, it's it's windy and crazy right now, right? Let's do this, says Zach. What up, Zach? Welcome back. Uh, good evening, says Fish Perfect. What's up? Welcome back, Fish Perfect. Garrett in the house. Wayne, what up, Wayne? CCA Cal in the house, guys. Exclamation point CCA in the chat, please. Somebody type exclamation point CCA and go check out ccacalifornia.org and you can join the CCA uh, club, uh, the, sorry, the CCA organization and help them support us in maintaining our fishing rights. So go check that out. Exclamation point CCA in the chat. Anybody? 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 Uh, let's see. What's up, Roy? Roy's here down in SD. Welcome back, Roy. Let's see salty in the house. Thanks, thanks salty. Thanks, Garrett. There it is. California CCA California dot org. Oh, real dreamer says I agree. T- t- Todd, what what did Todd say? We should get a tax credit for days like this. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Woohoo! Says Wayne. What up, Wayne? Uh, Cal says I know what you mean. Brian likes to fish. I drank a gallon of mold cider to bring my core temp up. Oh, nice, interesting. Very cool. Oh, speaking of drinks, I hope you guys have chose your favorite beverage of the evening. Uh, I will be doing the traditional pop top that was part of the beginning of the show. So pop top time. If you're new to the show, you open, we open a drink at the beginning of the show because this show used to be called happy hour, but now it's called fishy hour. It's more appropriate, but still it's a time for us to hang out after work, talk about fishing and relax and Help each other out, get better, and talk about commonalities and experiences on the water. And uh, so, yeah, that's what we're doing. So, first, let's pop a drink. So, in the chat, let me know what you're drinking tonight. I'm drinking a Dr. Zevia. See? See what, see what they did there? See what they did there? Dr. Zevia, this is a zero sugar but contains caffeine. Here we go. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best pop top you ever heard in your life. One being the worst. Rate this pop top. Oh. I took it to the limit there, guys. Sorry about that. Took it to the limit. That was more like a like an explosive crunch. Explosive crunch. Bullet bullet bourbon. Ooh, that sounds that sounds good. Uh Went to the beach. To, oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. I opened it, but didn't really take a drink. So, cheers, everybody. Uh, happy Monday. We're just getting started. Let's make it a good week. 
Uh, every day is a new opportunity to do to do a good a good deed for somebody. Okay, so let's try that. <sighs> Even with these non sugar drinks, I'm still trying to limit myself to maybe two a day. Uh, I had one for. I haven't had one today actually. This is my first one I've been holding out because I'm gonna have another one later on with my dinner. So, yeah, I've been I've been holding up. I've been waiting for that. So so cheers. An eight point nine, a seven, a seven, a seven, an eight, eight point three, a seven. Okay, that's pretty good. I like how everybody's judging has become more like, like uh, what do you call it? Uh, your 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 spread is narrowing. Like we're fine tuning our our rating system. So you guys are you guys, that's pretty good. Everybody's between seven and eight. Like eight point nine is a little bit high, but still it's it's like all within that range. Okay, so that's pretty good. We're we're calibrating our judging. <clears throat> okay, very cool. Um, I have. Let's see, here, here. Sorry about that, because I had to take care of one little thing before I got continued. I apologize. Oh, let's see what you guys are saying. Beef called the... What? Oh, Eric, that sounds so good. Dude, it makes me miss my mom. Man. Okay, so let's talk about that real quick. What is your favorite food when it's a rainy day like this? I... I, I uh, Right now, we're having... We're more into, like, uh, pho and stuff, because, like, my mom's not around to make us this, the awesome caldo, or, or pozole, or, like... My mouth is watering just thinking about uh, caldo caldo de res, which means beef stew. Yeah, like like a you have like a like a shank of a of a like beef shank, and you put um, like a a whole head of cabbage cut into quarters. Put some carrots in there. Put some potatoes in there, and like corn cut in half. So good, so good, man. Oh. Pozole sopa soups, yeah, exactly, Eric. Lucky dude, you're you're balling. Luck, lucked out right there. Picadillo's good too. Yep, yep. A word to you, Roman. Available. We'll be short tonight, but take me a couple minutes to get. Oh, very cool. Yeah, coach, let me know. Uh, let's shoot for seven thirty. If that if that works for you, that would be perfect. Meanwhile, I'll meanwhile I'll talk to the family here. Very cool. Uh, Mark Goldstein in the house. What up, Mark? Welcome back. All right, guys. I know we're doing the we're doing the tournament. And uh, we're going to be talking more about this uh, on Wednesday. Wednesday, we're going to do the, re- the, the reports. Uh, we'll let you know what the standings are. Uh, tonight and tomorrow morning, probably, I'll be working on the stats page um, on, 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 on Spotty Bowl. It's gonna, it'll, it'll take us to an actual ranking page where you can see everybody's like scores and you can sort out by, you can sort by uh, who's on top or whatever. And that's going to be where we have the official scores revealed. We'll be revealing that site uh, tomorrow uh, no, on Wednesday during fishy hour. I'm sorry, during fishy hour, uh, bay fishing with Roman and Brian. So that's when we do the scores. Um, in the future, if we get around to updating the scores on that website before the Wednesday show, the results might be available, right? But we're not going to officially talk about them on air until Wednesday. So I know some of you guys have been waiting since since Friday, and, apo- and I apologize, but it is the way we're doing it, just to keep it fair, so that the guys uh, that fish on Sunday don't have an advantage over the guys that fish on Friday, because they know what you caught, right? Okay? I know some of you guys were out there on Saturday. I wasn't going to go on Saturday. I, I just slept. I slept in. <laughs> I slept in. And uh, once I realized I had slept in, I just slept a little bit longer, and... I woke up and I was like, okay, it's about 10. I'm going to get ready, have breakfast, and then head out. And as I was getting ready, um, it started it started getting worse. Like the rain started, it started getting more more rainy. And I was like, ah. Uh. And eventually I just decided not to go. So I apologize if you guys were expecting me to be out there. Um, I know for the tournament thing, we're not really fishing together because we're all kind of like competitive and stuff. So, but yeah, I know, I know Zach was out there 
braving the elements like a boss. So Zach, shout out to you, dude. I know Cal was out there. I think Dario was out there. So good, good on you guys, dude. Good on you guys. Um, cool. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Arroz caldo reminds me of Cal. Yeah, dude. Oh, dude. Like when you ha okay, okay, okay. Sorry, Cal. That's good, Cal. So you have the beef stew, which is uh, which is caldo de res, and then we, and then mom makes this thing called like I, I used to call it orange rice. Which is basically you take like uh, tomatoes and, uh, oh, I know what she does. She browns the rice first before she cooks it. So she puts like a oil in, oil in, a, in a pan and then she, she fries the rice like while it's raw. She fries it so it, it makes it turn almost like, like brown. And then she, once it's browned, she makes, uh, while, she, while she's browning the rice, she's usually cooking, uh, like she has, she's making like a tomato based uh, sauce. And she pours the tomato-based sauce in the rice after it's already been browned, and then she bakes it. And then you get that you get that orangey Spanish rice. I guess people call it Spanish rice, but I don't call it Spanish rice. I call it my mom's rice. I call it orange rice. And so you take that with the with the beef stew, and you can either dump the whole thing in there, or you can just take a spoonful spoonful of each. Oh, it's so good, so good. Forget about it. Dario said, "What an what an adventure! Very cool." Uh, Whatever is in the fridge says two geeks. <laughs> I'm coming over, Wayne. What's Wayne doing? Uh, corned beef in the cro in the crock pot for Oh, nice, dude. That's so good. Uh, sorry, I know Leonard. I can't wait till Wednesday. Yeah, I haven't looked at the all. The, I haven't looked at all the scores yet, guys. I want to be surprised on the show, so I'll be as surprised as you guys. I'm waiting with you guys. Uh, Todd, good to good to meet you. That cool, cool, very cool. So Todd hadn't met hadn't met chat before. Chat before, okay, cool. All right. Fried tofu in that. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, uh, Eric says, my wife and your mom cook the same ramen. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that's really good. Uh Eric, does your wife make tamales? I know it's kind of like, well, I'll ask you that question offline, but that'd be cool. Uh Captain Dan says, Holy smokes. It's ha what hailing? Oh, it's hailing at the secret. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. Interesting. I need to talk to you. I'm going to try to my SPS SBS pre fish. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, cool. Uh, corned beef sandwiches. Oh yeah. Oh man, Cal and I, uh, I agree. Dario, Cal, and I were all over the place on Saturday. Zach, it was a good thing you didn't meet the guy with a coat. Oh what? It's a good thing you didn't think of the COVID. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the COVID is getting more uh, intense, right? It's like uh, there's like different mutations of it now. They're supposed, to be, they're supposed to be more infectious and and more deadly. I don't know. I just feel like I'm already like not leaving the house enough. I need I need to get out of the house more often. So, yeah, I need to get back to, back into fishing more. Okay. Uh, Eric says, no. Okay, Zach. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, oh. Wagyu, do you mean to say Wagyu steaks? Wagyu steaks and fried potatoes? That sounds good too. Shoot. Man, you guys are making me hungry. A homemade chopino. There you go. When I have all the stuff. Oh, interesting. Wagyu. Yeah, that's what, yeah, yeah, Wagyu. Uh, okay, see, Salty says, living it up, Brad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Two geeks. OC was moved down a tier, so I am a bit happy about that. Okay, cool. Moved down a tier, like, as far as, like, the, like, it's not purple. So you guys can do other stuff. Still, dude, it's like, I don't know. I think in, until we have enough vaccines for everybody, it's going to be kind of a slippery slope to get back into old habits. You know, <laughs> even though as much as we want to get back into old habits, it's just, it's just not a good idea. All right, we're going to move on from that. <clears throat> okay, so... What's all the corn, ch corn chowder pho? What? Nice, dude. I like that, too. Okay. So, um, do you guys have any questions about the tournament this weekend? You can throw them in the chat. Uh, have any clarifications we need to make? Because we're going to take some of these. We're going to take some of these questions and, and uh, answer them in full detail on Wednesday if we need to. 
So that's a, so I'd like to take the opportunity today to kind of do a quick little survey and just get a little bit of feedback from you guys as far as how the tournament is going. Okay? Cuz we've had we've had some stuff uh we have we've had some stuff come up that needed clarification or or some people didn't so we just need, need more clarification, I guess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to question what are the standings? <laughs> the standings are yes. The standings are yes. <laughs> 360 drive or 180 drive? Maddie two hooks in the house. Maddie I think uh, 180 drive is enough for what we do. I'm talking bay fishing, La Jolla fishing. Uh, I don't need the maneuverability of a 360 drive in my kayak. And there's never, there hasn't been a situation where I'm like, dang, I wish I could paddle my kayak sideways. But that said, if I had the feature, would I use it? Probably yes. And then on the other, on the flip side of that, there's more things that can break. I think there's more moving parts to that. There, have, there has to be more moving parts to that. So, and in any engineering, uh, anybody with an engineering background knows that every single piece you add to a to a device uh, increases the the complexity, of course, and the likelihood of it breaking. Right. So the more simple the design, the better. Okay. So less moving parts is better. 360 drive over Bixby. Uh, it's sad that, that, a, that a 360 drive costs as much as a Bixby. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I would I would choose... Uh, mm, no, nah, I would choose the Bixby because I would, I would choose the Bixby and, and my 180 drive over the 360 because I could... Uh, I could just pop in the Bixby and go for my long haul, get there, take it out, put my drive in, and just kind of maneuver around while I'm fishing in that zone. And then when I'm moving to my next fishing spot, pop the Bixby back in, get to my next spot, and chill on, chill, chill on my way over there, right? Or or conserve my battery. And towards the end of the day, when it's like the when you're feeling all drained and and you're done fishing and you and you fished all you can fish, and you just left enough energy in the tank to be able to pedal back to to the to the dock. Well. You can save that little bit of energy and fish a little bit longer because you know you could just turn the Bixby back on and haul it back to the <laughs> to the to the dock or to your landing. Yeah, it costs a lot. It costs a lot. Oh, what what costs more? The three hundred and sixty. The three the three hundred and sixty would get me out of a couple of sticky situations in the marina. Yeah, the marina that makes that on the in the marina it makes sense, especially on windy days, like when like if you're trying to fish parallel to the to the boats and the wind is pushing you into the boats. And you and you kind of have and you have to have your kayak parallel to the boats. Then yeah, I, I guess that would make sense. You can keep yourself off the off of the boats and keep your side and keep your kayak sideways, right? So that that would make sense. But for that one situation, is it worth that much of a price jump? I don't know. Yeah, and, and like I said, guys, like we've had Kevin Nakata on here. We've had uh, and he's like he he's he's at Hobie, and and I love my Hobie kayak, but I'm not here to 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 um. Like I don't have an affiliation with with Hobie. I don't have any kind of uh, sponsorship or any of that kind of stuff where I'm like obligated to talk to speak well about them. I love their kayaks. Um, I'm not sure if the 360 is worth it. And again, that's from that's from a from an outside viewer not having tried it. Okay, so just take it with a grain of salt. Uh, to me, right now, it's not worth it because of what I already have. It's good enough. If that makes sense. And you probably could catch a good deal. I don't know if you catch a good a good use deal. I know it's I know these kayaks are pretty much always in demand, especially now with COVID stuff that people are looking for things to do, where it's kind of relatively safe to be out. But yeah, a good question, Maddie. Eric fished for thirteen hours yesterday. Dang, dude, slaying. Very cool. Uh, and again, come August. We we do have this scene. Oh, we have a shindig. Also, by the world's best salmon. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, can you imagine if we get back together up by August? That'd be so awesome. Shoot, that'd be so that'd be so cool. Anyone fishing this Sunday, if the weather is good. Um, I think I think officially we have this weekend off, right? Uh, of the schedule. Let me double check. 
Spotty Bowl. Let's see, we have the next fishing day for Spotty Bowl is February 5th, 6th, and 7th. So we do have this weekend off. But I'm, pro- I'm going to fish. I'm probably going to fish on Saturday if the weather permits. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm going to fish on Saturday if the weather permits. I'll post it. Um, by I'll post it up by by Thursday that I'm gonna fish and I'll, and where I'm fishing, and you guys are more than welcome to come and hang out. Uh, you can bring your hawk trout if you want to, bring your scale if you want to, but I'm gonna try to be looking for a a two pound spotty so I can get in that two pound club. I know these don't count towards the tournament, but I still want to get out there and and uh, breathe some outside air. <laughs> Mark says, Mark Goldstein says, only caught two bass yesterday, uh, but got my hat caught by a fisherman from Liberty. What? <laughs> dude, that's so sketch, dude. That's so sketch. That could have easily been an eyeball. Dang, I'm glad he didn't get catch to the face, Mark. Uh, glad you're okay. That's crazy. Uh, Super Bowl is that Sunday. Oh, Super Bowl is that Sunday? What? Yes, yeah, so I guess people are fishing Saturday. Um, <laughs> Garrett says spot lock on the trolling motor is a game changer. Oh, for me in deep water in my boat or or just next to shore with a lot of swell current. Oh yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh Garrett, did you just get the spot lock? I thought you had one before. Did you just get it? That's interesting, Garrett. Roman, did you, did you get my voicemail? Uh, I'm, I didn't, Matt. I did not get the voicemail. I will check and uh, see if, see if I, see what I missed. I'll, I'll look at it. I'll look into it after the show. Uh, Mark says, "Freak is a freak thing." Guy line was in the guy's line was in the water from the bridge. Saw me coming up and reeled it really fast. <laughs> like to get out of your way. That sucks. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, guys, if you guys fish, um, if you guys do the Liberty Station kind of stand-up paddleboard beach launch, rem- remember when you're going under that bridge, there's two bridges. There's the one that's the actual bridge with a street with cars on it. And the one right before that, the pedestrian bridge, people fish from there all the time. So they actually they actually st- stay up in the middle on the top of the bridge and they fish right down in the in the water. And, and you can come across their line. We've, it's been situations where we've, we're coming across there like like we're mobbing it with like ten, 10 kayakers mobbing under that bridge, kind of trying to make our way out. And and all of a sudden it's like you see everybody just kind of like start making taking evasive action. Like, oh, 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 because like the guy up front finally notices that there's a bunch of lines coming down from the, from the bridge. So you got to be careful with that. Uh, with a boat, they can usually hear the boat coming and they can reel that stuff up and get out of the way. But with a kayak, it's harder for them to hear us coming. <laughs> Getting hail in a cajon, dang, dude. Yeah, here the here in I'm in I'm in Mira Mesa, guys. The uh, the wind has been like like you can hear it. It's actually howling like so. It's been crazy. It's been doing it all day, and then raining on and off, and then uh, <laughs> my little ki- my little my youngest son he's like he's like daddy, what does it what does it mean when somebody says it's raining cats and dogs? And he's like wondering, I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, it's not raining cats and dogs. It just means that it's raining hard. That's a lot of water being pouring down. And then so like later on in the day, it starts raining. It starts to actually rain hard. And he comes over here and he's like, Dad, it's Daddy, it's raining cats and dogs. <laughs> That's so. Oh, hail here in Bonita. Whoa, interesting. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, so maybe maybe hail's coming this way. That's, that's interesting. Uh, I'll use my. Hallie must Hallie machete to cut their lines. <laughs> That's so funny. It's like you're going. It's like you're, co- you're going out the under the bridge, going through a rainforest. Uh, coach, uh, let me know when you're. Give me a, a thumbs up or give me a uh, ready when you're ready. I think you might have you might have already, but uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, guys. Today we're just kind of hanging out, so I don't have anything prepared. In advanced, it's just kind of us hanging out, talking smack, enjoying each other's company. Um, and so, if you have any kind of, if you have any fishing questions, pop it in the chat. Any any comments? Any uh, anything of note that you would like to share with the community? Please do so. Um, 
yeah, it's pretty much uh, all positive vibes. I'm trying to keep it, trying to keep it fun. Let's see, Baker Lounge in the house. What up? What's up, David? Welcome. We're kind of hanging today. It's it's Monday. We're hanging out. We're gonna do uh, we're gonna do local fishing scene with uh, Coach Worf in a little bit. But we're just taking a couple minutes to hang out and talk. Arnie says, hailed in Oceanside before sunset. Wind was crazy here in Vista. Lightning too. Dang. Yeah, that's crazy. I know. It's like in California, that's this is like a big deal. Right now. Everybody, everybody else in the in the world is like, so who cares? Like here, we're like, oh, it's, it's raining. It's like, oh, it's it's a thing. You know, it's like uh, it's an event. Ooh, Cal, uh, Dave's, uh, Wayne says, great rock fishing last week below the Colorado Islands. Interesting. What, what did Maddie say? Uh, waves breaking at the pilot house that was 70 feet above the water. Line. What? What? Waves breaking at the pilot house. Oh, yeah, that's true because the wind, right? That wind is probably crazy. All right, tomorrow during the day, I'm going to drive over to La Jolla and just kind of see what the waves are doing. Uh, oh, yeah, let me, see, let, me, let me get that Discord up. All right, coach. I think I have it up. Um, I might have to, after we connect, I might have to move some things around, but we should be good. <laughs> but yeah, guys. Um, today I almost had to cancel the show because I, have, I had to do something at work that I rescheduled for tomorrow. So tomorrow I will not be on at seven because that's when my window starts for the maintenance I need to do. Uh, for the kind of work I do, I have to I have to do stuff sometimes outside of business hours so to not as to not interfere with normal business operations so tomorrow i'll be uh doing some maintenance work at seven which i know is when the show starts but that's kind of like the only time i can do it so that's that's tomorrow uh so tomorrow i will not be doing fishy hour on twitch but after i'm done with my maintenance probably about i don't know nine or ten i'm probably gonna come back and i'm gonna jump on and play some Warzone on 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 twitch so, but if you're still up, you want to come hang out and, uh, you're bored, come watch me play video games. And I talk while, while I'm playing video games. So, uh, that's good too. That's going to be over on Twitch. So I'm going to put the link up here. Romancaster.com forward slash Twitch. And as you can see right there, I, I updated my counter. My counter showing me 409 followers on Twitch. So go click that link. Actually, let me see if I have a, a Twitch I don't, even, I don't think I have a Twitch uh, a link on here, do I? I wonder if I did that one. Let's see what Zach said. Um, I have to, I have to, I have to wear gloves up here. It's cold. Mostly wear wear them in transit and then take them off when I'm. Oh, when I'm at the spot fishing, uh, Baker Lounge, are you fish? Are you fishing with like waterproof gloves? I know someone had a question here before about waterproof gloves, um, and we never really looked into it. Uh, but that'd be a cool thing to look into. Zach with a smooth burn. <laughs> what exactly? What exactly? <laughs> Haven't seen lightning in San Diego in three years. Thanks, Span. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh. Do you quick scope? Says Maddie. Two hooks. Uh, I I uh, I try to Maddie, and I try to uh, I drag scope, I and I kind of I kind of quick scope every once in a while I get lucky, but yeah, that's kind of the stuff I like to do. Uh, if you ever, sorry, if you've ever been to the zoo and seen a gorilla put his hand on the glass, that's what mine looks like. What? <laughs> what <are you> yeah, <laughs> I was. I was uh, a see Baker Lounge. Yeah, I was. Oh, interesting, very cool. Wetsuit neoprene. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so like, it's like almost like diving gloves, I guess, right? Yeah. Added spaces to elbow pose. Okay, cool. Uh, Mega Bass makes some nice winter gloves. Interesting, but they're waterproof, so you can keep wearing them. All right, so Coach is on. Let me see if I can get Coach on here, guys, so we can do um, San Diego. 
fishing scene and surface temperature charts with Coach Worf. Let me see. Uh, computer, cooperate. Join the call. Okay. Make this big. And Coach cannot hear me yet. Give me one second. Check one, two. Coach, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Yeah. There we go. Look at that. Technology. Uh, ring, ring. Says, <laughs> what up, Spotty Girl? Welcome to the stream. No worries. You can join at any time. And if you want to go back and watch the replay, that's also encouraged. Um, let's see. Let's get a uh, Coach Worf in the house. Let me jump over to Coach. I'm going to put him full screen first before I go to his screen. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Oh, I missed it. There it is. Yeah, what up, Coach? Coming at you live from the Coach Cave. It is Coach Worf with his surface temperature report and local San Diego scenes. Take it away, Coach. Yes, sir. So are you starting at saltwater tides here? This is going to be a short one, and we'll talk about conditions in just a minute. Got uh, afternoon low around 2, highs around 8.30. Should be good uh, shark fishing tides or anything like that, assuming any of it's fishable anywhere. Um, with the amount of grass and stuff that's being knocked into the water, it'd be tough for a while yet. And of course, our water temperature on overall is plummeting, courtesy of uh, your local rain and whatnot. We dropped like three degrees in a day or two, two degrees and change in a day. Wow. <sighs> So we will see what happens from here. That will drag the sharks up. The, uh, the bat rays have been lagging behind on their annual migration. So hopefully this will kick them up and uh, ray dudes will start producing some absolute beasts. I haven't seen anything over about 40, 50 pounds, and usually we're seeing 100 pounders by now. So, Dang. Need those, uh, need those big ladies to move into the back bay or... So as a temperature, lucky, dude. so as the temperature cools off like that, the bigger sharks move in. The bat rays. The bat rays got it. Big bat rays move into the back, back in like Mission Bay along uh, Danza Cove and Fiesta, and South Shores, and in Hidden Anchorage and some of the areas back there. As the water cools, the clams have to come up shallower. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Got it. That's cool. Yep. Yep. Yeah, the, the ecosystem shifts, and so are the predators have to shift to it with it. All those, uh, those summer, all those summertime anchovies and whatnot are long gone. The smelt, smaller smelt migrate up towards the surface. All the easy targets kind of change. Yeah. Oh, so the big food supply that's left is the razor clams and uh, conies and soft shells and those clams that are in the base. Very cool. So, coming into the weekend, got lows approaching sundown through Sunday here. And uh, a negative 0.7 at sundown could be a magical time if uh, some of this grass that's being churned into the water now finally clears up. Got it. And then, no guarantees. We'll, we'll go to temp break here. Boom. See this water that was 62, 63 degrees a couple of days ago. Now almost almost entirely at 59 or below. See that over here on the left? Yep. I'm moving it around so I can see everything. There it goes. Yeah. So um as our local water it's cooled by all this rain. Imagine a lot of this darker blue and purplish stuff you see out here caused by heavy rain going through nice cold air and slapping into the surface of the water. Interesting. Yeah, look how look how it's all like leveled off. Like it's all like pretty uniform. The temp. Yes. Crazy. Stepped out here at Tanner and Cortez apparently where I heard as of just a couple of nights ago, guys are still catching bluefin in the two to four hundred pound range. Back here where the little green buoy is? Tanner, Tanner, there it is. Yeah, all yeah. this yellow is right here. Yeah, but the only yellow and green. Yeah, only the only warmer water that is left. Interesting. Yeah, um, that's interesting. Uh, 
Usually we would see, you know, in conditions a little cooler than this, we'd see that uh, wintertime yo-yo yellowtail bite at the islands. We'd see, we'd see a few different things that I just haven't heard of materializing this year. So we have a local forecast here. We have gale warnings. I know. All the way through. <laughs> Man. Look at the size of the surf right here. And this is at La Jolla. 14. This is swell height. Wait, was it 14? Surf height. Oh wow, 14, 14 feet? to 16. So feet. so by by our, by the swell metric height. by the metric you add half of that to it, right? Like the peak. Yes, but that's not translated to wave height either. Oh, wow. So think about that. You could be looking at 20 to 35 foot waves, maybe what? with some waves bigger. Dang, I want to go just, I want to just go see it. I, I bet it sounds, yeah, I, I, wanted, it sounds I was actually awesome. wanted to go down and get footage tonight, but my yeah. back was bothering me. Oh, so no. I didn't, sorry, I failed the MMFC and not getting your footage, but i'm sure it was incredible i'm sure there were waves washing up into the mission beach uh the mission bay or i should say south mission beach parking lot is what i should say oh interesting it's usually wow yeah, usually on a incoming tide with 35 foot surf yeah. you get waves that'll reach the parking lot <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's awesome yeah i gotta go check it out tomorrow and it's worth the drive yeah. I, I need to get i need to do uh, some maintenance at work too so so i'll probably leave early go check that out and then go to work yeah, so we have a gale warning through tomorrow night. Obviously, this would not be the stuff to launch your kayak in. Actually, none of this is. Yeah. Pain um, and our uh, local bacteria levels make for a very uh, bacterially and and uh, viral, virologically, it might be the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Very active upper water column for a number of days, especially after our first heavy rain. So please be careful if you do go down there, if you get any cuts or anything. Basically, sure keep basically, all the stuff that's been on the streets washed into the down the drains and into the bays, so it's going to be extra toxic. So, yep. you want caniform and coliform yeah. bacteria will yep. be present in great bulk for some yeah. time. You don't want that. Uh, you want that bath some right now. Yeah, you definitely don't. You definitely you don't ignore your hook puncher when it starts puffing up on you. Yeah, you're gonna get a bonus. Definitely, it'd, it'd be a bonus. Uh, yeah, definitely bonus bath some extra extra fat. Oh, it'll be extra fat, at least until they cut it off. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Our uh, our local water is uh, nothing to be messed with after rain because it rains, partially because it rains so infrequently here and partially because of the density of uh, human and animal life we have along the coast here. Yeah, that's true. Um, out of the water, I should say. Yeah. Uh, leads to all kinds of fun and exciting stuff ending up in our waterways. I yeah. know a lot more about it than most people because certified uh chemical applicator to for water for aquatic applications it's yeah. a pain to get that by the way oh interesting but uh yeah so i have to go to continuing education stuff and we see all kinds of fun and exciting things happening with our local water and new, you get the rundown from the local authorities yeah. regularly new innovations and in, new innovations in uh <laughs> ways you can jack up the water it's like what they're putting what in the water now huh just kidding yeah you don't want to know. Trust me. <laughs> that's why. That's why I only drink uh, Zevia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep it going. <laughs> this is cool. All right, so we'll go. We'll go to the OSPO. Okay, I'm gonna make it big. Of Roman's favorite maps. Yeah, yeah, these are cool. Yeah. What do you want to see here? The Pacific. Boom. Do that. There you go, uh, guys. I'm sorry for. I'm sorry. I'm zooming in and out of the picture. I'm trying to make it better for you guys as a viewing experience, but I got. I have to manually adjust the size, so this is good. That's good, coach. Try to uh, not move it around so much on you. No, it's not. It's not that. It's just that. Uh, it's fine. You continue on. I, I'm. I'm adjusting on my end as goes. So you're. You're good. You can see this. Uh, fish water here. Kind of hooks up along our coast. Is right in the. 16 yeah. degree range or so so uh yeah definitely cooling off quick uh yeah, this is definitely the change is finally on us and i'm hoping this means i get a little extra time to opalai fish this year 
have had not a single high tide at sundown that was fishable for the spot I like. So, oh, that's funny. I don't know. I might just have to go anyway. But uh, yeah, the ten to twelve foot waves and real close intervals and tons of grass in the water has not made my yeah, life easy in any good. way, shape, or form. Yeah. Hopefully, I will change that around here next uh, week or so. Hopefully. Nice. And again, like last week, Gulpin and Sandbass are the uh, nature of the beast with a few blacksmith kicked in. Um, 19 guys, 49 Sculpin, 32 Sandbass, 4 Perch, and a Calico for yesterday's half-day fish count. So, uh, What website is that, Coach? Uh, this. Uh, we have what? Okay. Still, it's not, it's not, not great. Not great. Oh, not great, but I mean that's not a bad count for what for the conditions we've had. That's not bad at all, in my opinion. All all these boats are still operating like under limited loads too, right? Yeah. Uh, during summers gone by, the premier would have sixty people on board. Oh, okay. Cool. Man, that's gonna be hard right now to make money that at that in that industry. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's been brutal for those guys. Yeah. If you get if you do go out on one of these boats, please tip, please tip your, you guys. Very cool. They aren't making a darn thing right now. No. Uh, the double O. This is kind of what I was alluding to earlier. The Ocean Odyssey on a one and three quarter day with seventeen guys, two hundred sixteen rockfish, ninety two reds, fifteen bonita, fifteen lings, and two yellows. Usually it would be at least a yellowtail or two per guy. Uh, mostly caught on the yo-yo this time of year. Yeah. They school up above pinnacles and stuff. There has been no yo-yo yellowtail bite I've heard of. Wow. I mean, I'm sure somebody out there do has you, something do going, be- but... Do, do you think it's because there's less boats out there trying to find them, or they're not around? I think it's a combination of lousy conditions, mm. not enough boats out looking, yeah, and uh, it's just having kind of an unseasonal winter so far. Yeah, that makes sense. Like in San Diego, we tend to have a warm winter, a warm, dry winter, or a cool, wet one. Yeah. This winter has just been all over the place. There's been no consistency. Water temps stayed high. Uh, nighttime lows have gotten lower. It's, I don't know, we're just kind of everywhere right now. I'm, I'm, I'm really, as much as everybody complains about winter fishing, I would rather us settle into a winter pattern we can start working on the winter fish oh i see yeah yeah and have 90 degree days and then four days later it's 55 yeah that's a good point just makes it a lot harder to pattern fish figure out where they're going to move figure out where they're going to be but it even puts the fish off in the desert too it like closes the bite window to like three hours in the middle of the night and stuff it's oh wow yeah cool so i had a spy go out there and uh, give me a report and he told me the same thing i've i've been seeing for the last three months a uh, channel catfish were biting from about 10 30 at night to about 2 20 in the morning that was it that was all the bite window he got jeez so that's, that's, that that's, like, a, just that's like the coldest brutal. time of fish <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, just it's just brutal <laughs> and it just it forces you to like knuckle up in the worst conditions and yeah. just makes it makes makes the whole job that much less pleasant of filling a cooler out there just makes it that much harder interesting oh man put it back on that one because i know you like that man <laughs> <laughs> very cool cool um is that Oh, we're missing one chart, or was that was all the charts? Um, that was all the charts. Uh, if you want me to look up a wind one, I can try to find one for you. I mean, it would definitely be relevant right now. I didn't think about it though beforehand. Yeah, go go. Let's let's find a wind one real quick, and then I'll just kind of talk to talk to these guys for a second. Maybe go yeah, switch to switch to you, and I'll see what I can find. What up? We're still here. How's everybody doing in the chat? I I was looking at the at the surface temps, and I wasn't looking at the chat. Sorry, guys. Uh, I see Oscar in here. What's up? HTX Pulsar in the house. MFC Texas chapter. I see. I see. Okay. Good stuff happening in the chat, I think. Add good results with this. Okay. Good, good, good. 
Also, boats are not running and doing their annual maintenance. Oh, USSG inspections getting ready for the season to start again. Oh, yeah. Damn. Uh, Matthew says, I've been researching different boats to potentially buy. What's everyone's opinion on the best fishing boat for San Diego style fishing under 28 feet? Now, that's a massive that's a massive uh, conversation starter. I'm interested in that, too. I'd like to have a boat eventually. Kevin Tyler in the house. What up? Welcome, dude. I see Eric says, uh, fishing Saturday night, if anyone wants to join. Very cool. Are you fishing from the kayak, Eric, or from shore? Or what, what's going on? Uh, salty, uh, two geeks. Uh, okay, cool. Thanks, thanks, Salty, for helping two geeks there with that question. Uh, Garrett says, going out 20 plus miles regularly, the Parkers are great. Very cool. Yeah, your Parker is awesome. Is yours a, yours, yours is a, par- is yours a Parker? No, it's not a Parker, is it? It's a Ranger. Right, Garrett? Do your boat is nice. I love how wide it is. Uh, if, if you're new to kayak, I would pick days under 12 miles per hour and get some exp- uh get some experience and then gauge from there what you're more comfortable with yep yep very cool i like the finest boats it's pretty nice too uh kyle asks, what's up kyle welcome to the show howdy i hear boston whalers are good but i am not expert at all i love boston whalers uh some of the first one of the first boats i was on was a boston whaler and it's solid it's a, it's a cool those are cool boats but like with boston whalers it seems like uh you have like the Boston Whaler lovers and everybody else that's not a Boston. It's like an inside thing. It's like you either love the Boston Whaler or you don't. It's like very, uh, very, um, I guess, uh, what do you call it? Polarizing. <laughs> but I like, I like whalers. I've had some good, I've had some good fishing sessions on whalers. So both smaller ones and, and bigger ones. I think, I think the biggest one I've been on is like, it was maybe like 27 or something like that. Smallest, smallest one I've been on is like 14. I've had an awesome time in both. So, good stuff. Uh, just got my boating card in the mail today. What? Muto, you're buying, a, you're buying us a boat? <laughs> Muto, Muto, we're getting a boat? <laughs> Coach, are you ready? Okay. I want to hear back from Coach. Yes, sir. Oh, cool, cool, cool. All right. Uh, and I, I, I can just keep uh, going, zo- Coach. Zoom in on this. Cause I can just keep talking smack over here. There it's going to be hard to see, so zoom in. Okay, I'll be, I'll be zooming in. Let me get you back on here. <laughs> Muto said we are. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Woo, get a boat. It's like it's both of ours, but we'll just keep it at a buy house. <laughs> 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 oh, here we go. Oh, okay. Okay, graphical forecast, San Diego. Boom. Yep. Doesn't look good. I have to look, have to look on the big screen over here. Yeah, I like to, I like to use windy. Use a wind. Oh, there it goes. Well, I mean, windy's fine, but... It just takes this information, basically. Uh, right? I just have... Yeah, it's it's excessive if you want to look at one thing. Like here, we're trying to isolate the stuff out, right? Windy, Windy's fine if you're looking at the overall picture. Yeah, but this gets real specific. That's cool. So yeah, that's not still here, Roman. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm still here. Uh, explain to explain to us what we're what we're looking at. Okay, so right here where my cursor is. Yep. This is the wind gusts as of seven p.m. I'm assuming, I'm assuming so even this harder. is a, this is an averaged out wind gust. This isn't as high as they're getting. Okay. So right here, like everything weather related, it's oh, an average. Does that say does that say forty two? Forty two knots. So 50 odd miles an hour is your standard wind gust out at the Clemente buoy right now. Dang, dude. No wonder that's, that's well as huge. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, no joke. Dude, yeah, that's crazy. You look out here at Mount Laguna, 55 knots. So what is that, 68 miles an hour or something? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Standard gust. 
That's crazy. So you can see quickly how this changes our local scenery in a major way. Yeah, because all that all that wind is actually pulling heat out of the water, right? Uh, it's pulling heat out of the water, but maybe even more importantly, it's causing mixing. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so the deeper deeper cold water nice, with warmer top water. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so instead yeah. of having a nice warmer surface or surface area, it's going to start mixing the water down a hundred feet or whatever, yes. or however far. Yeah. So, so the, so the, the thermocline will be as defined or there won't be a thermocline. I imagine the thermocline would be really tough to find out yeah. there right now. Yeah. That's crazy. That's cool though. Like it, so, bring, I mean, it takes you, it takes you back to like old, like science experiments, you know, like uh, where you like have two, two different color, two different temperature uh, containers of water and they're each dyed a different color. And then uh, you pour them to the same container and like the, the warmer one goes to the top and the colder one stays at the bottom, but it's just, it's still water. Right. So anyway, yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> that took me back. That took no, me no, back coach. <laughs> Dang. They did, I did learn back, something in school. <laughs> Dang. I did learn something in school. Oh. So this is like at 1 a.m. I mean, look at this. This wind is going to be pounding. Oh. Yeah. Was that lightning? I hope you all heard that. I heard that. I was loud thunder, thunder, thunder at my yeah. house. All right. Well, I hope you're safe. Yeah, Jeez. Buddy. All right. Well, yeah, yeah, guys. I, I mean, you don't need us to tell you that it's crazy out there. So don't go out there. Get into trouble. <laughs> stay in. Uh, and don't go out in 50 knot yeah. gusts. It's probably stay in. a bad go, idea. Go watch, <laughs> uh, let's go watch some, some fish hour reruns. <laughs> come hang out uh say what's up it's fun cool all right coach well uh anything else you want to share with us today let me, before let we... me touch on something yeah let me put you full screen give me a second let me touch on something with you, Roman. oh i'm gonna adjust that real quick uh coach is like all right coach go ahead so, so Roman, you have heard that corporate channels are basically taking over YouTube's algorithm. Have you heard about this? Uh, nope, I have not. Oh, they are. Channels that didn't exist like six, seven, eight months ago. I have millions and millions of subscribers. Yep. I'm okay. And they're doing this by tweaking. By tweaking what? They're doing this by tweaking the, the algorithm output. That's fine. Like I, I like so, like for, I know. Like like for me, I don't care about that stuff. Like I I care that like I care that that like um like Cal found me. I care that like Zach found me, right? Like I don't think I found you. I found you, Roman. Although not here. <laughs> right, right, right. But like like I know Cal and like and Zach maybe Leonard. I know Salty. They found me through through the through a YouTube video or two that I made, and uh, I, I don't think a corporation could, even with all their budget, even with all of their algorithm hacks, if there is such a thing that they're doing, there could, is could could um make content for as many small markets as there as there are. Because remember, my goal with this whole thing is to only serve. Um. Like the fishing community, like I'm, I'm, I'm make, I'm not making stuff for the whole world. I'm making stuff for you guys, right? So, it's when you see my stuff, you know it's for you, right? So I don't, I don't feel threatened at all by, by that, by that, uh, corporate stuff. Unless they start niching down hard and be like, all right, we're gonna make spotty fishing videos. I'll be yeah, like, what the heck's going on over here, right? But by then, <laughs> but by well, then, I feel like I already it's have. It's not a, like that. It's, it's more like dilution of the rest of YouTube. But it makes everything else harder to grow. It makes it more difficult for other things to grow. Uh, that's that's they're a, eating up huge, huge chunks. Yeah, but that's like that's for people that are like that. That's that's them just trying to take over, like the trying to compete with tel- television. You know, that's what I think. It's them trying to compete with television, and for me, it's, so my so I I look at that a different way. I say this: if if a multi million dollar company is willing to invest money into getting people to come and watch on youtube that's fine because it's bringing more people to that platform which is where my stuff is already so it's more potential eyeballs that can see my stuff because i'm not competing with them on 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 uh what's it called well this is kind of like a nightly show i guess but i'm not competing with them on like uh 
oh, let's do the the Apprentice here, or let's do the what's it called, Big Brother here. No, I'm not. I don't do. I don't do reality TV. I don't do that stuff. So, I know that if somebody that doesn't know about my show gets brought to to YouTube thanks to one of these companies that's doing whatever to attract somebody from traditional TV to YouTube. If that person is also watching a, a fishing video and they live in San Diego and eventually they find me, that's gonna this, it makes it more likely for that person to find me than uh, so I, so I don't know it's I, it, you can look at it two different ways yeah it does uh, soak up more viewership but it's also they're bringing viewership to the platform so that's the way you gotta look at it does that help? Well, a uh, <laughs> a certain YouTuber made a video earlier today about breaking the YouTube algorithm so that smaller channels have a better have a more likely chance to grow. Yeah. What what it comes down to with the YouTube? And he basically, go ahead. He essentially posted a video showing how to take advantage of all their stuff and break the algorithms that they have to fix it. Yeah. Instead of allowing a few channels to take advantage of a few YouTube features and make it big on almost no content. Right. Yeah. See, it's like I'm not. I'm not. I'm not concerned with that. Like, uh, I just. I'm. Okay. I'm just gonna keep making the content we make, and if people find us, they find us. I think I think a lot of the stuff that a lot of the growth for from our stuff here, especially like uh, it was funny because like the last time we fished together as a group, um, I don't know if they were just doing it because I was on because I was on Discord with them, but like Zach and like I think Dario and like even Brian does it all the time. Like they basically share that that we have a group. Uh, that's like word of mouth. That's like that's like before even TV existed, before any radio existed. There was word of mouth, right? And and uh, that to me is gold. That to me is like, uh, okay, we've built up enough credibility and enough respect with these guys because they see that they're that they're actually learning by watching the stuff that they feel it's worth telling somebody about it. That's it right there. That's a whole formula. I don't care about the algorithm. I don't care about any other stuff. Yep. If you're making something that somebody feels is worth yeah. sharing, it's gonna it's gonna succeed, even if it succeeds slowly. I guess I don't know. Anyway, no, I know I've brought a few people <laughs> to your channels over time. Yeah, too, see? Roman, so. exactly, exactly. So yeah, slow and steady. We'll just keep it as it goes, slow and steady. And then if uh, YouTube is going to do their thing, and uh, Twitch is going to do its thing, uh, what I do recommend though for you guys that are watching right now and and wondering what the hell we're talking about, uh, if ever YouTube or Twitch or Facebook or whatever decide to cancel my shows, um, most of you guys are on my email list. If you're not. That's going to be the way for me to get in contact with you guys and say, hey, they killed our channel on YouTube, but we're starting a new channel on this platform, whatever the platform happens to be. Uh, so do make sure you do sign up for the uh, for our email list here. It's uh, romancaster.com forward slash 25 tips will take you to the sign up page. Yeah, that's a good conversation, Coach. I, I dig it. Let me, go put, let me put, put you back in here. Coach. That's a good topic to bring up, though. So also for those of you guys that are looking to make content and looking to make like a YouTube videos or whatever, or Twitch videos, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, Mark says, I found you by word of mouth from Dario. See, that's cool. Yeah, exactly. So I think as long as we're making stuff that uh, people find value in, it gives them the opportunity to say, Hey, you know what? I got something out of watching this guy or like, or like being a part of this group. And I think you will too. That is them being able to kind of give something to somebody, right? And just by referring to them, they're also, they still get the same feeling of giving, right? Even though they didn't make the actual content, they're part of the community so that, and they're giving that to somebody. So that's like, you're helping them get better too. And it's like, I, 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 just, I just think as long as you make stuff that's uh, uh, positive and helpful, then people... I mean, this is what we have. This is the this is the 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 fruits of our labor is what's happening with this whole like tournament and just the the, the cool community that we have going right now. Sorry, coach. <laughs> Off the soapbox. <laughs> and eight oh one. So. <laughs> and eight oh one. That's so funny. All right, Roman. <laughs> uh, oh, um. Eric wants to know, Coach, what are those books? Um, <laughs> those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm like a nerd. In some ways, a worse nerd than Roman. In oh, some nice. Ways not. <laughs> but uh, 
that uh, non non Mossad uh, approved decoration in the background here. Oh, nice! It's part of my vast library that I have achieved as a guy who has made literature a huge part of his life. So That's I actually cool. have a literature degree. What? True story, bro. Not to, not, not to say that I wouldn't expect to have a literature degree, but snake charmer, lion tamer. Literature degree, however, I always say <laughs> that's awesome. What the hell is this guy doing here? That is so, that is so right, awesome. Going go. go back, going back, going back. There, there we are. Classic there you go. The one more facet of coach revealed tonight on the show, guys. See, that's what you gotta ask question, guys. That's what you gotta ask. That's question. a rare. That's a rare. That's a really rare book. That's a rare to lose me right there. <laughs> I thought I thought you were gonna start pulling out comic books. That's good. <laughs> Okay. And if you guys are into into crappy nineties uh fantasy, that's a good one right there. The anvil of the world. Oh, okay. Okay, okay so is free. that so that's your so let's we're gonna start adding you know how, how um Brian has his movie recommendation at the end of the night? Coach's book recommendation. And go. Um, I'd have to hunt for a bit. You can just tell us what it is this time and next yeah, time have man. it ready. Um I think I think if you're into fantasy, I think the Eye of the World series is one of the greatest books that was ever ever uh, written in terms of what I would call incorporative <laughs> fantasy. Not that that term means anything to anyone, but <laughs> it's um, like, like like not that you would know what that means. <laughs> With your feeble <laughs> fisherman mind, <laughs> I've met some pretty smart fishermen. So I've met That's some pretty so smart funny. fishermen who can read it all. That's so funny. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Wayne said, but, uh, MMSC yeah. Book Club. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's happening anytime soon. If, if, the wind, if the wind keeps up like this, shoot, we might have to. <laughs> I'll be out here reading like uh, Ernest Hemingway, just narrating it to you. It was the best hey, of times. It Perfect. was the worst of times. Dude, people that read books get views on YouTube. Uh, it's... <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. There's a couple of channels with millions of subscribers and they read books. That's funny. I mean, it makes sense. Makes sense. Cool. Well, that was a good, that was a good side tangent coach. I, I appreciate that. I thank you for your questions. Thanks for bringing <laughs> variety to the show and uh, brightening up my evening. That was fun. <laughs> Very cool. Moby Dick says, says Muto. Oh, good Lord. It's uh, classic, but kind of overdone <laughs> these days. The, the yeah. tropes well understood. I would say. Yep. Yep. Very cool. Brian, Brian does movie coach. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Cool. All right, coach, let me go jump back on here. Uh, we need to do a split stream with you now that we have this available. So I'm going to set that module up for next time. Um, yep. But cool. Uh, anything else you want to share coach with us before that you go? A sign Stay off. safe out there, people. Stay safe. Just be aware of your surroundings. If you're gonna, even if you're out on the bay, I realize it's not thirty foot surf in the bay, but even if you're out on the bay, you know, really tend to your nicks and cuts. Um, really, just be aware of your surroundings. It's windy, stormy days. I mean, you never know what'll happen. You know, bodies could wash out of the rivers or anything. That is <laughs> crazy, but it's true. I remember? Uh, yeah, I remember a couple of years ago. Um, I was with a dude. He's like, "Oh, we're waiting for the police to show up." I'm like, "Why?" Oh, there's a body down there in the rocks that washed up. Dang, dude, that's so crazy. I was on. Uh, <laughs> I was on Vacation Island. That's insane. Brian said his Sorry. brother is a best-selling author. Wayne said you should do, you have Coach's audiobook service or Coach's <laughs> Coach's book, audiobook series. And then Arnold Arnie said like having Morgan Freeman reading a novel. <laughs> <laughs> How's the old joke go? Oh, it's every uh, microphone I walk by going to turn to gold now, too? Oh, here we go. There you go. Nice, dude. That's so funny. Cool. All right, Coach. Good. That's a good thought to end on. I appreciate you, sir. Thanks again for making Mondays awesome. Appreciate you, Roman. All right. Well, have a good one. My pleasure. All right. See you. Take it easy, uh -huh. Roman. That was cool. Coach, man. Always, always showing up, representing. Making the show more fun, more entertaining. Thank you, thank you, Coach. Uh, Wharf TV is where you where you can find Coach on YouTube. 
You can also find him on sdfish.com. He pretty much owns the forum. Uh, he doesn't own it, but he lives there. <laughs> if you put something, if you comment, if you put a post on Warp, on a, <laughs> on SD Fish, Coach will find it. He will respond to it. He will like it. He's a man. So he's also full of knowledge. And the best part of all of that is that Coach is one of us, one of us, one of us. And he's willing to share his knowledge with you, with anybody, beginners, experienced if you're experienced at one thing and you want to get into a different type of fishing coach is probably the guy to talk to he'll point you in the right direction say hey you know what that guy knows a lot more about that than i do check out this guy hit up that guy he's 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 pretty connected in the scene he knows a lot of people uh so hit up coach for any fishy questions outside of fishy hour schedule (laughs) okay cool stuff um (laughs) brian said i'm gonna rent a hot tub Pon- uh, so Brian's gonna rent a hot tub, hot tub pontoon from Mission Bay for Spotty Ball. <laughs> Who's down? Who's down for the hot dog soup? <laughs> On that note, hope you guys enjoyed the show tonight. I had a blast, and uh, tomorrow I will not be streaming uh, Fishy Hour because I have to work. But I will be back for. Bay fishing with Roman and Brian, including the results of the Spotty Bowl tournament last week or the so far. We're gonna reveal the results page. Well, you will be able to go through there and sort stuff by name, by inches, by place, whatever. Uh, it's gonna be fun. I hope you guys uh, have a good night. Um, I'm gonna have some dinner, and after that, I'll play some Warzone, and I'll probably be streaming that on Twitch. So, if you want to come and hang out. I'm doing it for two things. One, just to hang out more with you guys and be able to entertain you guys. Second, so I can go back and look at my plays and see how I can improve. So, you know me, I was trying to figure out a way to better myself, even if it's just a video game, okay? So that's gonna be over on Twitch. RomanCaster.com forward slash Twitch. Make that counter bump up from 409 to whatever, okay? So go over there, hang out. I'll be on there like in maybe an hour, okay? And I'm gonna be streaming uh, pretty late into the night. So if you if you're if you're bored, don't have anything else to do, come hang out, and we can continue this conversation, or start a whole new conversation about a different topic. Okay? We can talk about fishing. We can talk about kayaking. We can talk about YouTube. Anything. It, I'm an open book. Uh, if you need help with anything, also I can give advice on that kind of stuff too. Okay? So I will talk to you guys officially. I'll talk to you guys Wednesday if you don't show up tonight. Uh, other than that, have a good night. And uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. Um, yeah. yeah. We'll let the song play out. Yeah. I see Izzy, Salty Dan, Leonard, Cal, Zach, Eric, Captain Dan, Wayne, Arnie, and everybody else. Sorry if I missed you, Dario, and everybody else. Good night, guys. Have a good one.